Good morning. Good morning. First of all, we want to give honor to God and thank Him for blessing us to see yet another day, granting us the opportunity to be able to come out. The weatherman was saying it's supposed to be some snow flurries on the ground and raining and all. God is so good. Because even if it had been that, that wouldn't have kept us from coming together. That wouldn't have kept us, but the thank be to God, the, the, the streets are safe, the weather is, is good, and we just want to keep all those that we are, uh, that we know of in our prayers. So many things have transpired since the last time that we came together and met in the, in, in the Lord's house, and we definitely want to keep uh, Sister Hawkins and that family in our prayers and, and the uh, loss of her grandson, and uh, who was a uh, Memorialized on yesterday, uh, funeralized on yesterday, and so uh, please keep that family in your prayers as well as uh, those that um, I don't have on my on my in my thought right now. But there are others that have passed on, and and uh, the situation that's going on within our government. Uh, it's just a whole lot that brings that scripture into mind for us to pray without ceasing. Uh, we should be constantly in prayer because there's constantly things that are going on. That the prayers, the fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous. So let us do our spiritual uh, duties and pray, as well as keep uh, lifting up the Lord's name, because that's the only hope that we really truly have, is through Christ Jesus to uh, uh, be able to make sense of the whole matter. And so just continue to do the things that we should be doing in regards to that. But today is the Lord's day, Amen. the day that the Lord has made, and let us be glad in it. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm happy. Amen. I'm glad about it. And uh, we're going to ask that you keep my wife, Sister Boyd, in your prayers. She's not feeling well today. Uh, that's why she's not here. Uh, as many others who are on our sick list, it's so good to see Sister Sister Andrews here today. Amen. Uh, thanks be to God. And, and that's all of us, but we have members here at this congregation that are going through so many hardships that when they're here, because a lot of times they can't be here because of those hardships, that we call them out because we want them to know that we're thankful be to God. We're thankful to God that he blessed them to see, uh, see this day with us. But for everyone, your family members and loved ones, uh, let's keep them, in our, keep them in our prayers. Brother John um, Marvin Jr., I just found out today that was in a, in a head-on uh, collision, mm -hmm. and God blessed him to walk away from it. Car was total, mm -hmm. but his body wasn't damaged. Mm -hmm. That's a blessing. That's the kind of things you want to hear and you want to testify, mm -hmm. testify about. And so we're thankful to God that he, John, or the other person uh, was not harmed in that in that in, uh, that wreck. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, brothers and sisters, when we go to the Lord in prayer today, let's just remember all that you know of, people I don't know about, uh, but for sure uh, that we're going to keep them in our prayers in regards, in regards to. Mm -hmm. With that being said, I'm going to ask that you would bow with us as we go to the Lord in the word of prayer. Heavenly Father and God Almighty, we thank you, first of all, for being the God that you are, mm -hmm. to love us, your children, so much that you allowed us to see yet another day, a day that we come together to worship you and none other but spirit and in truth, a day, Heavenly Father, that we didn't even know when we closed our eyes last night that we were going to open them today to see. So much, Heavenly Father, we can start this morning out with just being thankful for that. Then we look around, Almighty God, and see our loved ones still mobilized and getting around and to and fro with so much to be thankful for our neighbors, Heavenly Father. No one had to call us even in the middle of the night to tell us any tragic information. So much to be thankful for, God, to where it just, it just seems like we should just be thanking you instead of asking you for more. Amen. But you're the kind of God that can be thanked, and even if we don't ask you for it, God, you're the kind of God that sees that we need it, and you'll make the way for us, Heavenly Father, to have it. We ask you, Almighty God, that you would just bless us to be more diligent, uh, in the study of your word, more diligent in our prayer life, more diligent in our uh, ministry and our ambassadorship, going out and sharing your word with those who do not know. Mm -hmm. uh, help us to be, Heavenly Father, ever more courageous uh, during this time that uh, the tragic things that are going on uh, throughout this world to not give up in fear, 
uh, to not run because we know we have hope, Heavenly Father, through your daughter's son, Jesus Christ, who will conquer all things. And so we ask you, God, to help us be the kind of spiritual soldiers, uh, continually um, uh, having on our armor, Heavenly Father, to ready to fight uh, off the wiles of the devil mm -hmm. because we're living according to your will and your way. Mm -hmm. We thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice, and we ask a special prayer for the families that have bereavement and loss of loved ones, Sister uh, Hawkins and others, Heavenly Father, uh, the gentleman that was uh, killed with this, this angry mob and all those things. There's so much uh, hatred and so much anger going on in this world, and all they have to really truly do is turn around and look for love, and that's it, through you, uh, through Jesus Christ. So we ask you, Almighty God, that you would help this world to make a turn for the better instead of for the worse. We ask you to continue to bless our minister, Brother Shaw, with all things that you see he's standing in need of, from the spiritual as well as the physical, and to just keep on keeping on moving in the direction that you were well pleased in, in his efforts. Continue to bless he and his wife, Sister Shaw, and his family. As they endeavor him to to be the examples that you would be pleased in. Be with us now, Almighty God, as we prepare to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask you to cover this place with your arms of safety, Heavenly Father, and help no hurt, harm, or danger to come unto any of us in this room while we worship you. And then as we go throughout this week, that we continue to be safe, Heavenly Father, as we continue to hold on to your mighty, unchanging hand. Got to keep it in our records as we go forward. And it's in Jesus, your Son, our Savior's name, we pray and we ask it all. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. 
to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. Yes, trouble in my way. Y'all, I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. Sister and brothers, good morning. Good morning. so good to see you. Yes. Thank the good Lord that He brought us to this yes. week, yes. to this day, mm -hmm. and we hope that He be with us next week. Mm -hmm. So let's go to Him and pray. Yes. Kind Father, Lord in heaven, we praise Your holy name. We give everything to you. We thank you so much for 
bringing us here. Woke us up this morning to see this brand new day that you made. We thank you for letting us be able to go to the restroom, to get up and call out your name. When you wake us up, we have you on our mind. We thank you. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus yeah. who came into this world to save us. Save mankind from his crooked, even his way. Yeah. Father, we thank you. Yeah. We thank you for loving us so much. Yeah, thank and you give us a second chance mm -hmm. that we weren't supposed to have, but you gave it to us anyway. You gave it to us so we could be saved, and your son pushed it to church with his blood. He did it because he loved us. Yeah. And we know we need him. We can't do without him. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the world is in a, a road. It's just so pitiful what the world is going through. But you knew it. You knew all about it. And you said it in your world, man will be so sensitive. He would not, not love his neighbor, wouldn't love anybody, only love himself. But God, you are a Savior. Yes, sir. You are our Savior. And you, yes. you know what we need. And you don't want to see anyone be loved. Yes. Father, we, we want to say one word to say this says, Brother Shaw to bring word of God to us to add it to our life and take it with you and don't be ashamed to tell someone yeah. that you know. Mm -hmm. Father, we just thank you so much for all you've done. Yeah. It really won't make me cry to see what's going on and person that don't believe in you mm -hmm. and they see you every day, your miracle, they yeah. see it. And it still is say it's not a God. But we know yes. you are yes. God. If it wasn't for you, it wouldn't be nothing here. We wouldn't be here. Amen. It would be a dead nothing. It wouldn't be nothing. But we know you are God. And we want we know that you want us to spread your name on the highest mountain. Say, God loves you. Father, I have so much to thank you for. Yes. Thanking you for bringing us here to worship you. And this to be my prayer in your holy son's name, Jesus yes. Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Amen.
no question about it. Those Christians that make it, if they're not happy, God has a place for them. And I say to you, he's not going to just put you out. And he doesn't have to worry about calling an ambulance to find out what your problem is. He knows what our problems are even before we ask him to give it attention. Yes. I want to say to those that are visiting with us, we certainly appreciate, we certainly appreciate your coming being with us today. Amen. Amen. We, we got one more after this one, and we will be through with Pharaoh. Well. I just want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you be disappointed if well, be disappointed if uh -huh. you got up there and you couldn't stay there uh -huh. because something is left out well. that you should have worked on while you were here. Uh -huh. So I say to you, listen, because God shows us in this lesson that we're working on that uh, if you haven't made the change, you need to make a change. Amen. Right. And if you think you're going to sleep by, I want to tell you something. Mm -hmm. You're very much wrong. Amen. This is lesson two, and I've got another one. I'm, I'm, I said I'm going to try to cut this one down to uh, at least two and a half or three. But the main thing I want you to know is that your soul is at stake if you haven't done what God wants us to do. And I'm using the Bible to show you how God deals with us when we don't feel like dealing with God. And you know that's true. A lot of people will stop coming to service just because they're mad at somebody. Well, do that. You're going to wish you had come. Uh, because that's what's going to face us after judgment. So I'm going back to... Exodus chapter 7 and just let you know that I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. Amen. I'm trying to get everybody happy to do what God asked us to do. Because we'll see it in the lesson and the main thing that I wish that we could do and we'll be able to do today is to get the picture that's being painted. All right. People are dying every day. Yeah. Every yeah. day. Yeah. Somebody's leaving us. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's good, good to know that uh, we see you been missing. Uh -huh. But that's all right. Uh, just do what God asks you to do. Right. And uh, right. your husband needs some encouragement too. All right? Then the Lord, this is verse number four of Exodus chapter seven. We're going down through these verses to show you that God's not playing. He is not playing with anybody. He said unto Moses, Behold, I will rain down bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. What a God we serve. The bill is on him. The bill is on God. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, thank you. Do what? Verse 4. I'm sorry. Exodus 7 and 4. 7 and 4. Okay. Exodus. Yes, sir. And he says that uh, I'm going to send you out. You can gather bread. And the people shall go out and gather at a certain rate every day. <clears throat> Get that. Every day. He said, but I'm going to prove you. Yeah. Now, really, you haven't got it yet? That's not it. That's not, it. That's not, it. That's not seven four. Well, what am I reading then? <laughs> well, we'll find it. All right. <laughs> the main thing is, I see eight. Oh, and in the morning, y'all yeah. see that one? Verse 7. 
Chapter 7. Chapter 7. Yes, Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7. Well, I'll just jump down a little bit. But that's all right. Let's, let's just pick it on up now because I don't want to be here all day. Do you all mind being here all day? Let's just start with what brother. Did he say in verse 4 that, and, and then said the Lord unto Moses, that's not that? Is it verse 9? 8 and 9, okay. Well, I must have printed here twice. And in the morning, what is that? Huh? Let me put it up here. Exodus 7 and 9. When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Come on, somebody find these verses. That's, that's the text. That's it. That's, that's, that's the one? Yeah, All right, verse 9. When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, yes. Show a miracle. Yes, sir. All right. Show a miracle. Uh -huh. And what I did, uh -huh. I was supposed to be moving that top part up because I read it last week. All right. But now we're down to verse 9. All right. And this is where I was supposed to start, but I... Did something wrong somewhere. It's all right. When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you. Yes, when thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take a rod, uh -huh. cast it before Pharaoh, yeah. and it became a serpent. Uh -huh. All right. A lot of snakes out there, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Moses and Aaron went unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh. And you know what happened? Pharaoh had his servants with him, and it became a servant. Then Pharaoh also called his wise men. There are always some wise folk. And I'm saying to people that are afraid of services now. All right now. You know, you're afraid to come out. come out. But I do want you to know this much. If you are afraid of the, the virus, you know what I'm saying? Come on now. If you are afraid of the virus, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you sure ought to wake up. Right. Because hell is worse than this virus. Amen. One thing for sure, hell is worse than the virus that we are running from. And I'm just saying to you, I'm just trying to help you to get it together. When he called his wise men, and he told his wise men to do like wise, do the enchantment that they are doing. For they cast down every man his rod and became serpents down there on the ground. But Aaron's rod did what? Swatted up their servants. Swatted them up. You can't beat God. You cannot beat God. You have to realize that what God wants, God's going to get. He's going to get it. But they cast down every man his rod and became a servant. And Aaron's servant ate up their servants. Woo! What a day it must have been. And sometimes we wish that Sometimes we wish that all, all of our things would have happened in our eyes. Mm -hmm. In our eyes. But it didn't happen like that. Right. Because we have to know that God is right. So he's proving them. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, you, when you pass the test, don't worry about it because God knows what you're doing. Amen. Plague number one is coming up. Well. What God did, yeah. he said, now here's what I'm going to do. When they act like they're acting, here's what I want you to do. Hold your rod over the water. And the water became blood. Are y'all there with me? Yes, sir. It became blood. And all the fish and all the things that's floating around or swimming around in the water, the Bible says that Pharaohs at that morning would go in to get some water, went out to get some water. Thou shalt stand by the river banks against 
him when he come. And the rod which was turned to a serpent shall thou take by the hand. Now, God told Aaron what to do. Most of us, if we don't know what kind of snake it is, we're not going to pick it up with our hand. Unless we have put some work on his head. Now, if we kill him, pick him up and throw him out the way because kids are frightened when they see this. And he said unto them, unto him, the Lord God of the Hebrew has sent me unto you, saying, Let my people go. All right. Let my people go. Yes, we got our nerve. We got our nerve to think that we can outdo God. He said, let him go. He said, if, if this is what's going to happen, I'd have something to let them have. I'm saying to us, check your faith. We need to look at our own faith. You can't rely on my faith. You got to have your own faith to work with God. You can't just say, well, I'm a Christian and I can, I can do that and I can do this. You can't do everything God's folk can do. I'll say it again. You can't do everything that God's people can do. The best you can do is to obey God. And when the folk that belong to God don't do what they're supposed to do, God has work for you to understand. Then he says unto them, watch this. Let my people go. Let them go. God could have taken them from those people. He didn't do it like that. He knew what he was going to be doing. He knew how to get them to understand. But he said this, I am going to harden Pharaoh's heart that he will not do what he sees me do. And I'm going to take those people and make them realize that they need God. Everybody that have, have seen some sickness somewhere, and a lot of folk have been sick, a lot of folk are still dying. Yes. But I tell you one thing. When God gets ready to stop it, God can stop it. Yes. Don't ever think there's nothing impossible for God to do. Yes. Nothing. Not one thing's impossible for God to do. Then I want you to come on down and look at verse uh, 20. And let's see what he's having to say about this one. Because when, when I realize that folk are just doing the way they want to do, and not doing what God asked them to do, you better wait on God. Well. You better wait on God. And Moses and Aaron did so. As the Lord commanded. Do we obey God like God, Aaron and Moses did? Well. God told Aaron, said, uh, Moses, I'm going to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. And you tell your brother to do the same. And don't change anything. Mm -hmm. You just tell him and let him do what you ask him to do. When he took out there and put that blood, they showed that blood coming up in the water. Look at what's happening. A lot of us think because we got insurance, we can replace what we got. Not if God don't want it to be replaced. Not if God doesn't want it to be replaced. We have to know that we are wrestling with somebody. Your arms are too short to box with God. And you don't have enough strength in your arms to wrestle with God. So the best thing to do is do what God asks us to do. Yeah. And nothing he asks us to do is grievous. He'll work with us and he'll help us. But church, know for sure, so many of us won't listen to God. When we look and see what's happening with Pharaoh, and when he saw that this thing wasn't working like he thought it was going to work, Pharaoh became nervous. And uh, every fish in the lake, uh, in the river, Every pond, mm -hmm. every where that was water was bloody. And that's something. Now we'll check Pharaoh. He goes into his house and he is going to get him a drink. Because you can't drink the water. God made sure he said, Now listen, if it's ponds around, it's going to be bloody. Church, don't make God. Show you the test. And the fish that was in there and whatever else was in there, when it died, the Bible says that they stink. Mm -hmm. And he 
he's going in his house looking for water. Well, guess what? When they went in there to look for some water, it stank. Mm -hmm. Everything was stinking because God wanted it to stink. Amen. I'm saying to us, we're going to stink one day if we don't straighten up. We need to do this. Check your faith. You must have faith. And I like this next verse. He says, in verse 21, he says, The streams, the rivers, the ponds, the pools, vessels of wood, vessels of stones, died. Whatever had water in it, what was in that died. And it stank like the fish did. I'll tell you one thing. Jehovah has proven that he can do what he wants to do and will get your attention. And he wants us to know that God wanted him. When they got out there and looking in the Nile, trying to find some good water, it wasn't good. God covered this earth one time with water. Everything here drowned except the fish. Everything except the fish fish. Man and all the cattle died. What a God we serve because God had had them to load it into the ark and that was going to be their safety. Get them all in there. What I told you to put in the ark that's what I want you to do. But listen, listen. Pharaoh couldn't find any water. God decided well he's going to ignore what I showed him. So I'm going to send him some frogs now. Now you might eat frog legs, but I'm telling you, you wouldn't be able to eat these frog legs. Because everything that deals with the water as a fish and a frog, moccasins, whatever, everything in that river of water and in that stream of water, in the ponds of water, everything in water Died. Everything. Sometimes when we don't have water, if the water was off and it was late at night and you had to go maybe a quarter of a mile to get a, a bucket of water to bring him back and say mother needed it. But guess what? Guess what? You had to go get it. When God was ready for us to do what he asked us to do, there's no need of saying, well, I don't want to go. No, it's you that he sent you. Go do what he asked you to do. God said to Moses, return to Pharaoh with this ultimatum. You let him know that this is what I want him to do this time. Because when he sees these frogs, and a frog is just a tailless amphibian, he don't have a tail, just a little old nerve there. But when he sent him out and put those frogs in that water, they died. They died. Covered earth. Just hopping along there, jumping and leaping. One thing for sure. Someone has to realize sometimes frog food is good. But sometimes it's not good. Sometimes it's not good. That was the second test God put before them to prove them. And sometimes God checks us to see if we're going to be proved. For an instance, if I didn't want, if I wasn't sick, if I wasn't worried about something, God could let me come on the service. A lot of folks just stay where they are because they don't want to obey God. But it's coming up again. It's going to come up again. If you don't want to do it, God asks you, watch God do what he wants to do. Look at this next next play. Lice. Woo. God said, I'm going to let you check, it, check the lice out. The Lord said unto Moses, say unto Abraham, stretch out the rod, smite the dust of the land, stretch it out, Slight the, uh, strike the dust of the earth, and let and let me show you what we're doing now. And all those lice came up. And I'm telling you, lice are not good creatures to want to take as a pet. They can get in your hair and drive you crazy. 
get on you and drive you crazy. But the one thing that we need to understand that God is not worried about whether or not you're going to like it or not. The message is to us to listen to God and know that God is God and there's nobody like him. When God does this, he means for us to listen and understand and get a message out of it. Mm -hmm. He did, and I, I, he did so many plagues on them until you would think, right down now, we're finna go to the third one. When we get with these lights and find out what's going on, what will happen is that you would think a person would say, man, all of this is going on, I'm going to have to do something. But they didn't, he didn't do what he did. All God asked Pharaoh to do, let my people go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let my people go. And all of this will stop. Mm -hmm. keep, keep doing what you're doing. But you wish that you would do what he said, when he said, following the lights was fly. Flies. And one thing about it, a fly will wear you to death. You can leave a piece of meat there. And if you're warm enough, that fly can land there. And before the next morning, maggots are moving around right there. That's, that's just terrible. But who's worse? We are. Because we don't obey God. Don't let lights get on to you. I've never had them, but I've seen people say, oh, I've even heard them tell us that we don't come to school tomorrow when they found lice in some kid's head. He said, no class tomorrow. You'll get a free day tomorrow. Man, I'm telling you, when God wants us to get the message, we ought to get the whole message. And they live off the atmosphere. They just come through. They got a lot of things that they can do, but they do what God sent them to do. Now, that's crazy. Little bit of things, but they are not doing everything that God has asked them to do. And God will see that they die as well. God says, I'm going to tell you something. I want you to know that these things that are happening to Pharaoh were just to teach him, you got my people. And they're not going to stay like you're treating them right now. you got to treat my folk right. Y'all remember this? If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, learn to do good and not evil, God is saying to us the way, mate, the way to God's heart is to do as he is saying. Do as he said. That's why children sometimes wonder, why is he doing this? Well, he's God. He's God. And he, he knows what he wants to do. He's trying to save. And the one thing about God, when he punishes us, is to save us. He's not doing it just because he's mean. He's doing what he is doing to make us look at what we are not doing. We're very stubborn sometimes, and, and we have to realize that God's going to get a hold to us because we're not doing what's right. Some folks just will not listen to Moses, will not listen to Aaron. Now somebody's saying, well, you're not Moses. I know I'm not Moses, I'm not Aaron. But the one thing, if I'm telling you what God has said, you, you must listen to me if it's the word of God. Amen. You must do that. God don't want you messing with his, his servants, and especially if they're his servants. There are some preachers that are not God's servants. Just say it like that. And you better start checking it for yourself because you find yourself in a bad fit, fit and can't get anything done like God wanted it done. He wants you to love him and he wants you to also love the people around you that don't know about the Lord. How many of us actually try to teach people about what God wants? That's a bad setup for the church. We need to teach them. I'm asking all of us to see what God's going to do. Now he's going to work on the cattle. And he said, and he, he told them earlier, make sure that you get all of your cattle out from where you are now. Take them with you. They was going to go to worship and serve God and sacrifice to God. But he said, you better take them out. Or you're, they're going to get the same thing Pharaoh's. 
cavity and stop is going to get. I'm saying to us, look at God. Exodus chapter 9, verses 1 through 4. The Lord said to Moses, go unto Pharaoh. Go back. And tell him, I said, let my people go. Remember, God said, I'm going to harden his heart. Chapter 9, verses 1 through 4. Verse number 2 said, but if thou refuse to let them go, we'll hold them still. He just kept keeping God's people. Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon the cattle, which is in the field. If you got cattle out there, get them out of the field. Put them in your barn. Mm -hmm. Put them up somewhere. Whether what's going to happen to Pharaoh's crop, what's going to happen to Pharaoh's cattle, mm -hmm. what happened to your cattle. But you got to keep yours in the barn or in the farm. Well. We have to live, live with what God tells us. And I'm so interested in this, I just want us all to know, when God asks us to do something, we best do it. We best do it. And don't think that God don't know the sins you commit, but God know all of those. Man, we have to, we have to get right with God. And I want, it to, I want it to sink into your heart, because God can do worse than this pandemic we're facing. God could do a whole lot worse if he wanted. And guess what? I hear a better, a better pandemic is coming this way again. Yeah. But you, 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 you ought to see that there are a lot of folks still living that it hadn't bothered. It may get them right, but if you stick with God and your faith is strong, you got to have strong faith. To deal with some of the things God let us see. Right. Strong faith. Be faithful. You know what he said? Be faithful. John said, Be faithful unto death. Now God said, I give you a crown of life that will not fade away. I'm saying to us, let's be faithful. Let's look at that, that this is uh, something that God wants us to do and something that we need to do because God means business. Right. Amen. He means business. And whenever you find that you can't wrestle with God in Exodus 9. These are several things that God wants us to see that he can do to us. And I'm not a fear, fear, a fearful of God. I fear God because that is something I want from God. What is it, Brother Shaw? Eternal life. And I want to live with God throughout ceaseless ages. Now he promised me that if I obey him, I can live with him. He's not going to put up with my foolishness. He didn't put up with that that Judas was doing. He didn't put up with that that Satan was doing. And he's certainly not going to put up with what we're doing. And I'm saying to us, we better get together and realize whether or not balls. Paws and under your skin and it swells up. And sometimes it gets bad. But God has said in, in verse number 8 and 9, mm -hmm. it inflames Pus under your skin. And that's poison stuff. And you need to get something to take care of that. So he's letting us know that as long as we got hard heads, he's going to tack something else onto us to make us realize. We've got to do something. Right. We've got to do something. I'm saying to all of us, do what God wants you to do. And he says that this it, it, that pus is supposed to kill the impurities that's in your system. And whenever you get anything in that blood system, you're subject to die. And so you got to have a pure cure and do the thing. Then later on, God says, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. You have not passed a test on any of this that I've asked you to do, and I have to add another to it. I really want you to check this out. I want you to check this out. He sent hell mm -hmm. from heaven. He sent it from heaven. And, and what he has done, verses 9, chapter 9, Exodus 9, 18 through 20, you'll see what he has done. Sent hell from heaven with fire. You get that? With fire. That hell was just so hard, they said, get all your folk inside. So it won't kill them. Because you're going to find out that your cattle and 
everything that you own is going to die. And if you're out there, you're going to die with it. So what do you think we ought to do? This hell had fire mingled with it. Terrible thing like this in the land. But God wanted us to see. I'm here. The beasts, the trees, the herbs, everything, the herbs, the, everything that was there. The fact was, every man's beast remained in the field was destroyed. Every man's beast that stayed in the field was destroyed. You got to take them inside. Get them out of that. Every child that we don't teach right, they'll be destroyed in the end. God is expecting Brother Shaw, Sister Shaw, to teach our children. Everybody must teach their children. Some of us just have forgotten all about it. But listen, listen, you don't want, to, you don't want anything to happen to your child. And I'm going on down now to the locusts. Lord have mercy. The eighth plague, the locusts. Now watch this. God said, I'm going to send some locusts down. Now, go back and tell him that he needs to straighten up and let my people go. Didn't do it. So what happened? He sent the locusts. Locusts will eat up your crop. If you got a wheat, you got wheat, they'll eat up your crop. You got corn out there, they eat up. And they came in such a force. It looked like it was dark. But they came. They came in all of that darkness. Dealing with them because they wouldn't deal with God. Pharaoh, you're going to have to answer to me. And God let him know that you better do something about it. Because you're not going to be able to make it. All that darkness. All that darkness. I remember an eclipse came one time, and we didn't know anything about the eclipse. And it got so dark at midday. It was dark. And we were all frightened. We ran in the house, and God said, my dad said, that's God doing his thing. And that ought to be enough for us to realize that if your daddy tell you it's worth hearing, amen. I'm not going to teach my kids something wrong. I'm going to teach them what's right. You remember what, God, what happened? Ananias and Sapphira wanted to do what they saw other people. Don't do it because you see other people do it. Do it because God has told Pharaoh to let his people go and then he let him know this is what's going to happen to you. And I'm saying to Ananias and Sapphira, they saw other members in the church. In, in the assembly, given a certain amount. They want to show up and be there with them and do just like they're doing. If you know what God has asked you to do, you do what God wants you to do. The one thing about it, Ananias went on down there with his offering. He did, went with his. And his wife stayed behind. That's why we already know what we're going to give. We don't pinch off of that they belong to God. Uh oh, did I say something? We don't be taking in a God's money. If it's God's money, you make sure that God gets his money. Don't pinch off of it. Because you wish you hadn't have done all of that. And you know what? Along comes his wife, but her husband is dead. Here she comes. Peter asked, what? why did the Spirit make you do the same thing your husband did? Your husband claimed he had made so much, but God knew what was going on. Don't ever think God doesn't know what's going on in our life. Amen. Amen. I mean that. Be careful. Be careful because God, you can't sneak anything by on God. While it remains, God wants us to know He's still asking prayer to let His people go. Now, don't you know? Don't you know that? What was troubling God at the beginning? And then that's, don't you know that God knew the voices of all those that was murmuring up above? We talked a little bit about those people that were murmuring. You don't murmur against God. Right. You don't do that. And God just told them, listen, you're going to have to pay the penalty. And 
And I, I tell you what, I just don't want anybody missing heaven because you won't listen to God. I'm going to tell you something. You must listen to God. God wants us to do his will. Blessed is he that heareth these sayings of mine and do them. I was laughing unto him as a wise man that builds his house upon a rock and not on the sand. I'm saying to us all, listen to God. All of us, all of us need to listen to God. A worst thing can happen to us. You remember when God dealt with that man been there at the at the lake 38 or years. The pool, brother. 38 years. And the man, when Jesus came, Jesus said, Would you be made whole? He said, I would, but when I'm trying to get in, somebody's stepping over me. That's something to think about. He said, Pick up your bed. Take it with you. He saw him later. He said, If you don't straighten up, a worse thing can happen. That's what I'm trying to tell us now. Trust God. Our faith must be in God. Our love must be in God. Our obedience must be because God asks us to do it. If we don't do it, we'll pay for it. I think, I think that we need to know God is not willing that any man should perish. He's not. But I know one thing. And all perish if we don't obey God. God's not playing with me. He's not playing with you. And don't think that he, he doesn't know that uh, you trying him too. So he's proving us. And he know he wants you to know that you're not going to get away with it. You, you need to know that God is going to make me pay for all of my sin. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is what he said in chapter 6, verse 23. The wages of sin is death. Now, you're scared of this pandemic? Mm -hmm. Wages of sin. You're supposed to have faith. And he says, oh, yeah, little faith. If you got faith, use it. If you got faith, use it. Trust God. And don't trust yourself. You, you're going to hide inside. You don't, don't think that that pandemic can't get in here if, it, if God wanted in here. But the basic thing that I see, and I'm, I'm thankful that everybody does what we ask them to do here. And those that are doing it like we ask and God has told us to do, a lot of us can be a, a good, rich life. But don't play with it. Have to pay back. But you're going to pay back with your soul. And others are going to pay because they were obedient. You heard God's word. You heard it. I just wonder if you believe what you heard. God can use all these pegs. And, and listen, he, he doesn't run out of what he wants to do. And he doesn't have to use the same one over. That's what I want us to understand. He doesn't have to use the same plague. Oh, but if he wanted to, it's his right. It's his right. I say to people, I say to people, oh, that's it. Six feet, go to the store, and sometimes I'm, I'm right, walking right on past my wife. Sister Charles, look, Six feet. Yeah, we forget sometimes. And somebody that loves us remind us. Six feet. You're supposed to stay back that far. Some folk won't, won't do what you ask them to do. But we better do it. That's why you hear church saying, I don't have to be baptized. I was Christian when I was born. <laughs> you don't even know what was going on. So you got to know what you're doing. Your mom and your daddy need to know what they're doing. That baby hadn't done anything in eight to ten days, and you want somebody to be Christian. I had a woman ask me to do that here. I said, sister, we have to obey God. 
You got to know who he is. You got to whenever somebody try to christen your child, you just let them know. God's will, I'm coming down. God's will is for you and I to obey him. Will you obey him? If you haven't done that already, think about it. The little boy told us what he's going to say.
children that are around me, the ones that I'm helping to raise, and, and just their lives in general. Um, keep them also, keep Derek as well in your prayers. I know they're starting school back tomorrow. Um, and just keep me in your prayers with the um, guidance of homeschooling. Um, it's been the interesting uh, two nine, first two nine weeks, um, and then we're on to the third. And so just keep both of us in your prayers uh, with me working from home as well as dealing with uh, school. It's been a, it's been a challenge sometimes, and so just keep us in your prayers. Also keep Trey in your prayers. He did return back to school um, to Abilene on yesterday, um, and of course with that big break, uh, just pray for the with COVID and everything, just that he can remain um, healthy in, in all the students that are there, faculty as well. So. Um, I want to thank you all for praying for us as we travel back and forth from um, Sherman to Paris. Uh, keep Clifton in your prayers. That's where he is this morning. They asked him to preach today, but um, next Sunday we'll be, be gone as scheduled. But um, also keep my sister in your prayers and her family. Her husband, he's been off work since, I would say, April, and her, her work is sporadic. So just keep them in your prayers so they can find something permanent and, you know, get back to their normal life. Right. Sister Brown. Um, I should pray for me and watch my job and a lot of changes coming, a lot of changes been made uh, with the insurance and everything, so a lot of doctors have to change. And just pray for me uh, that I'll find some of the best doctors that's in the plan that I have picked and uh, I can uh, pretty much uh, stay well. Yes, first of all, I just want to thank God for being here this morning, and I want to thank my brothers and sisters for uh, all that they have done for my family during this time of grief, mm -hmm. and I want to thank Brother Shaw for the message this morning. Uh, a lot of times when families say we need to get back to God, I just pray that you all will continue to pray for them, that they will get faithful, and the way we do that is by being faithful to God and getting back into the fold. Mm -hmm. So continue to pray for them that they would do just that, and uh, just continue to pray for us as we finalize my nephew Charlie on tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Thank God for technology that we will be able to be a part of that funeral mm -hmm. on the uh, phones on tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So keep us in your prayers. Thank Amen. you. Sister Scruggs. Sister Gillard. I, excuse me, I can't hear you. It's okay. Speak loud. Thank you. First of all, give it honor to God for being mine. And I want to once again thank you for the prayer for my family. And I talked to my mother again yesterday. And she was determined to come home. But the pastor lady said, see what the doctor does. And just continue to pray for me and my family. Sister Douglas.
Um, and she's abused me for six months while Faith is on deployment, so please keep Faith here in prayer. Amen. Yeah, thank you. Amen. Thank you all for the prayers for my uh, granddaughter, who my car and some of my nieces are just as far as for them that had this infection, and they're doing well now. So I just ask you thank you all for this prayer. Amen. Just before we word this prayer, I want, to, I want you to think about something that Sister Stone just mentioned. And I think sometimes when people say things, sometimes it just kind of goes with bias, but whoever thought that would be a time in our history, in our lifetime, that we're living now, that there wouldn't be room in a hospital for anybody. Well, they would have to tell the EMTs that if the people aren't at dire need and aren't going to die, don't bring them to the hospital. That's what they're telling them. And that's a decision that that EMT, that emergency technician, has to make on the spot, on the spot, which I'm sure puts that person in a very curious kind of a position. Brothers and sisters, this is serious what, what's going on. We always say we don't know when we're going to die. We don't. We don't know what death is. But just being ill can cause you to have a death sentence. But thanks be to God that there's a hospital that's taking in patients, these patients every day that if they're living a Christian life, you got the best, the greatest physician in the world. And he'll take care of that. I know sometimes when we hear this, it don't seem like the assurance that we need. But if you live in a Christian life, any assurance about God and his ability to keep us healthy spiritually and make heaven our home should be a blessed assurance. And we need to think about those things. Brother Good. I don't want to be absent in saying, um, I thank you all for your prayers. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm not here, I still feel the prayers. So. Mm -hmm. Just keep me, continue to keep me prayed, uh, prayed up. Uh -huh. um, I'm, I have my grandkids again, so uh -huh. thank God for that. But I ask that you keep my children in your prayers. Uh -huh. uh, that they make the right decisions in their lives that, you know, they can uh, live a full life. Uh -huh. and they can get closer to God. So uh -huh. just keep them in your prayers and keep my family in your prayers. So it, just for Brother Goodman's sake, a lot of times when Brother Goodman's not with us on Sunday, he's speaking at Peace of the Lord, some of the sister congregations. So we appreciate keeping up that word, Brother, and making sure God's word is spread uh, when you're doing those things that you're doing as well. These young men that go out and, and minister in these congregations where the ministers aren't available and aren't able to be there. That's just another credit to Brother Shaw allowing these young men to get up and speak the word from time to time. And when you do that, the more you do it, the more confident in God's word you become and your ability to love. And so we say, again, thank you for that. Bow with me, if you will. Heavenly Father and God Almighty, we thank you so much for, first of all, as we said before, life, health, and strength, and then the opportunity to be here to hear your message or proclaim. God, we thank you for Brother Shaw and all that he's, in his own personal, physical life, uh, have to keep up with the medications and uh, the different situations that happen to him uh, physically, Heavenly Father, and, and he, he just has to continue to struggle on through that, and he does. But he trusts in you, Heavenly Father, and the reason we know that is because he's here today. So we thank you for that, and we ask that you will continue to keep him both spiritually and physically healthy. Not only he again, but Sister Shaw right there by his side, for they all want And we pray, God, that you will continue to bless them both as they continue to uh, exemplify the Christian walk.
both as husband and wife, as members of the body of Christ here at this congregation. We ask a special prayer, and we ask you, God, to uh, put your umbrella of blessings over each and every individual that has stood in this place today. But you knew before they asked. You knew exactly what was on their heart. You know in whom they are asking it about and what they're asking it for. And because you are the all-knowing God that you are, we don't have to itemize, we don't have to recall anything, God. You heard it the first time. So we leave it before you, Almighty God, trusting and prayerfully, they're trusting and faithfully trusting in you, who's been faithful to your word from the beginning of time, even through the message, God. You were faithful to allow your people to be free from bondage. You made it happen. It may have taken a while. And that wasn't because you didn't love them, but it's because of the hardness of someone else's heart. But we thank you for that. We thank you for Jesus, the righteous, that came down and lived in a way, Heavenly Father, that encountered and took on all the sins that we encounter here today, but yet was found sinless. So he gave us the opportunity to know that it can be done. I said all that to say this, Heavenly Father, that we have to live a certain kind of way because we know it. That there's nothing that we can do about ourselves. It's not even in our in, in, in man to, to direct our own path. We know it's all you, God. So when we come asking something of you, when we bow in prayer on behalf of not only ourselves but others, God let us know right there at that time and be reminded that we have the ability to connect with you through Jesus Christ. But the initial thing and the first thing that we have to do is be righteous ourselves. It's the first effectual prayers of the righteous that avail much. Let us be fervent in prayer. Let us be righteous, Heavenly Father. Let us do the things that we're supposed to do as we come to you, Heavenly Father, and ask of you things that only you can deliver. And we ask you at this time that you would deliver unto these that have stood the request in which they've made. Let us not go about trying to wait on it. Let us continue to do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Let us keep our uh, faith strong, let us be obedient unto thy word, let us, when we make a mistake, get it right, let us uh, mind all the things that we as your children should be minding, because it's for sure that we're going to have to call on you. So be with us, abide with us, let us, allow us to help keep ourselves keep our hand in your almighty hand and not let it go. For you never have and never will, as you said, turn your back on us. But at some point in time, we seem to get the wrong direction and turn our backs on you. Help us to not do that. Help us to be ever mindful that you are our God. We are your children. And we ask you, God, to continue to be with us all. God, keep in direct us as we go further into this service. And it's in Jesus, your son, and I will say this name we pray. Now we come to part of our service that we show the Lord's broken body and shed blood. And I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 30. And it reads, For I receive of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do it remembers to me. I the same man also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as you drank it, in remembrance of me. For often you eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, you do show his death till he comes. Wherefore, who shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily? shall be given to the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drank it no worthily, eateth and drank it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come humble myself before your throne, Father. Thank you, Father, for your Lord and Son who died that we might have a right to eternal life. Father, we wish you to bless this bread and to bless this cup and to bless those that will take of it, Father, 
Praise God and stand the reason why they are doing so. Please bless you with your daughter and son, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Then we're going to follow through when we get back to the Lord. I read from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. And it reads, But this I say, He who soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He who soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man is according to purpose in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let us pray. O great Heavenly Father, once again we approach your time, Father. Thank you, Father, for jobs or whatever income that we may be able to give back to you. At this time, Father, as you bless these offerings, that they go for spreading the gospel, education of the church. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. We say once again, thank you, Brother Saul, for the job well done. We ask that. As you come in, and just just a reminder. This is a reminder. This is a reminder. Uh, we had requested that those who park on this side would enter on this side, and who parks on this side would enter and exit on that side. Uh, we want to bring that back up because it also helps us to have to keep from having to cross. The past, and I know this might seem very elementary to you, but people, we need to understand that once we, if we let these guards down that we're doing, that's when situations arise. As long as we keep it and keep it before us and continue to do like we're doing, and that's not to say it won't happen here, but the likelihood of it is a lot less if we continue to do what we say we're doing. So, if you're parked on this side, we ask that you enter and exit on that side. What we do ask also is if you come in late. We ask that you would go down that hall and go behind and sit down. Please don't cut in front of the camera. Okay? And, and, and we're not calling names. We're saying that because we're asking that. We're, we're saying that. This is not, we don't, we, don't, we don't want to call names. We're asking that because this is part of the procedure that we're asking people to do. And we're just reaffirming and all that. Please do that. We appreciate so much. Uh, everybody, we love you. And as we prepare to leave, we're going to have a prayer, then we're going to be dismissed, Brother Snow. Brother, sister, we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for rising up this morning, laying us down last night. Amen. Heavenly Father, bless all of us to make our way home. Safe without hurt, harm, and danger. Amen. And all our homes, the same way we left them. Yes, amen. Heavenly Father, bless this country as we go into this new year. Amen. Heavenly Father, bless us as we go into this week. Yes. May we find someone we can help out amen. and do something good for. Amen. And bless them. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Yes, you may on the hands of each end, you may stand and pass. Thank you.